Altering the allocation of funds for Medicare, Social Security, and Defense would be the first step towards stabilization, I suppose. A blank sheet of paper is what you need. Is it necessary to have 800 overseas military bases? Would you say that's keeping us safe and how much? Does it all cost? As such things go. Then it hits you our diet isn't as healthy as it once was. As a result, healthcare costs are now exceedingly expensive when measured per capita. Consider Japan they've had, and are still dealing with, a major aging issue. They spend about a third of their GDP on healthcare per capita while being significantly older than us. Prominent macroeconomist Lynn Alden recently explained the present and future of the American economy using a meme. In the meme, a train is seen speeding towards a bus that is positioned on a train track. The bus stands for the monetary domination of the market during the last four decades. The fiscal domination train smashes into the bus in the second frame. The ideas we held about markets and the economy during the monetary domination era, according to Alden, are now out of date. During the monetary domination era, central banks could easily stimulate or slow down the economy through bank lending, which made monetary policy successful. But according to Alden, the developed world, including the United States, has entered a new fiscal supremacy age characterized by massive debt and deficits. Fiscal policies have limited the instruments available to central banks like the Federal Reserve, rendering them unable to properly control the economy. Interest rate changes have a greater effect on bank lending and credit creation than on budgetary dynamics. According to Alden, the situation is quickly spiraling out of control and criteria that were crucial during the age of monetary domination will probably no longer be applicable in the future. Austerity measures too? Re-establish balance, the sole workable solution, are politically untenable. Alden emphasized the unsustainable course of the U.S. economy in a recent interview with Anthony Scaramucci, CEO of Skybridge Capital. She ended by issuing a strong caution. This train is unstoppable. However, this shows that the conventional methods used by central banks are becoming less and less successful, which will pose problems for the economy as it moves from monetary to fiscal. Supremacy. More stimulus was requested by Powell during the pandemic. As a result, we essentially went above the norm whereby monetary policymakers often refrain from making comments about fiscal policy. They make an effort to avoid becoming overtly political. He did, however, mention that having exhausted many of our resources, financial backing is necessary. Thus, in that specific case, he breached that boundary. My current position is that the flip side of the coin is the market being smacked with an excessive amount of fiscal stimulus. However, he is wary of offering any commentary on the budgetary side, likely stemming from his reluctance to acknowledge its significance in his role. However, I believe that central bankers should now say something if they are attempting to be intellectually honest about this. Because the primary tools of a central bank are designed to accelerate or decelerate bank lending, it becomes difficult to carry out any of my responsibilities when deficits are this substantially large. That is really their primary target. Additionally, the current fiscal dominating environment is characterized by the fact that the volume of new bank loans created is less than the average annual budget deficits. Therefore, in many respects, those budget deficits have a more significant effect on the economy than those bank loans. Even things like inflation can be driven by them, along with some of the inflationary repercussions, they can get things like nominal GDP going hot. In essence, it's expressing the idea that one does not possess the necessary resources to address the situation at hand. Now you know what to do if you want those requirements fulfilled. A monetary reaction is required. Government officials in charge of the budget or the central bank can get away with declaring that there is a fiscal problem in the long term as long as they qualify their statement with the words we still have plenty of room. This tactic is politically acceptable at the moment. The real road. He's kind of having problems while they're in charge, but no one's going to say that. Additionally, I believe that greater openness is required concerning that matter. To that end, I would essentially suggest that you tone down your own behavior a bit if you want me to carry out my duties effectively. Otherwise, I would step down and explain that you place me in a situation where I am unable to fulfill my mandate due to a lack of resources. Changing the structure of spending around defense, social security, and Medicare would be the first step towards stabilizing this, I suppose. Basically, you need to start with nothing. Is it necessary to have 800 overseas military bases? Would you say that's keeping us safe? And how much does it all cost? As such things go. Then it hits you our diet isn't as healthy as it once was.
As a result, healthcare costs are now exceedingly expensive when measured per capita. Consider Japan they've had, and are still dealing with, a major aging issue. They spend about a third of what we do on healthcare per capita, yet they get better results, while being significantly older than us. There is obviously some form of healthcare expenditure. Is it a nice way of saying that Americans tend to be fatter than Japanese people? Is that an acceptable form of expression? A skyrocketing cost for medical treatment is the end consequence of all of that. Then you may take care of stuff like social security and mean testing. Hey, there are some things you can do to try to get things back on track. Unfortunately, very little of this is likely to actually occur, much less all of it occurring at once. Therefore, in my opinion, it will be structurally extremely difficult for any politician, no. No matter how well-intentioned to do it, and it's likely to happen almost immediately after taking office, even if they win the election on that platform, no set would be won by them. This means that the developed world hasn't seen a debt crisis since the 1940s. Emerging markets are also encountering them at the moment, so we can get a glimpse of what this type of event looks like by merging what's going mathematically today with what happened in the past. Culture and technology are obviously distinct. Every conceivable detail is there. Basically, I would state that specific traits of emerging markets begin to emerge, are faced with budgetary challenges, especially in a developed nation. So the crises don't all strike at once. A pre-crisis and post-crisis period does not exist. Rather, it usually consists of a series of events that sort of come to a head at the same time. At the outset, a crucial point is that the central bank becomes structurally monetizing fiscal debt after it loses control of its own balance sheet and is unable to ever rein it in. While continually providing justifications for why they aren't actually doing that nonetheless, their balance sheet is increasing at a higher rate than before. Therefore, that is the initial stage. Since the repo crisis with which I'm sure most of you are already familiar in early 2019, when there was a financial plumbing issue, I would argue that we have been in that fiscally dominant posture ever since. As far as I can tell, that signifies the beginning of the consequences of fiscal domination. You were aware of that, but it wasn't a crisis since people didn't experience it. Then there was the pandemic, the financial problem in 2023, and the guilt crisis in late 2022. All of these little things build up in the long run. It appears to be the difficulty of maintaining an inflation target of 2%, which was added to the list not long ago. I mean, 2% inflation isn't always necessary for their concept of price stability. Though they could, they choose not to aim for zero. By their own estimation, though, the goal is 2%. You have the issue of returning there in a sustainable manner, a substantial increase in the uh, money supply and the government's incapacity to raise interest rates to combat chronic inflation are the results. Because once again, bank lending is not the primary concern, those rates are counterproductive. The major cause of the current inflation is the government's budget imbalance, the rise of. Protectionism is evidence something along the lines of emerging market tales though. The currency crisis is not our fault, you know. People are hoarding it, or speculators from the outside are attacking it. Or you're trying to pin the blame on some obscure and unpopular group. Perhaps you feel that the wealthy as a whole are a nebulous category, and you point out that this is why our currency is losing value to foreigners. Scapegoats are necessary in any situation. Yeah, and I believe that basically you see it today with some of the larger, for instance, the Social Security Fund will run dry in the mid-2020s. Uh, causing a kind of severe crisis. People would only receive a set fraction of their expected benefits after that time unless that is addressed somehow on either the spending side or the income side. Current tax money, not the existing fund, would be the only source of funding for it. It doesn't move from. Ordinary to Mad Max, rather, you experience these mini crises as you go. To put it simply, there is a gradual sequence of events that anyone studying emerging